So I get asked this question a lot. Hey Jeff, where do you go and what do you do when you're on vacation? Okay, ILO, let's roll. My answer this time was to take a camera on vacation and shoot a travel show in Aspen, Colorado. But as you're about to see, this family adventure did not start out smooth. We're at the gate and we saw it starting to snow outside here in Denver and I thought this probably isn't good for us. But the lessons learned in this travel nightmare were worth the pain. There is a beautiful trout stream running through the middle of this valley. Because when travel throws a curveball, and at some point it always will. Butt slide, nice. Learning to pivot quick and make a new plan will deliver you to places and moments like this. We got a double, we got a double. Both Conley and Mark are hooked up on fish right now. That you'll remember long past things like a white knuckle blizzard death drive. I quite possibly had the best pancake of my life. I'm gonna go ahead and call it a semi-religious experience. And as we found once this trip got back on track, Aspen, Colorado isn't just a playground for movie stars and the super rich. Very well photographed group. Okay, got it. Jill went in that store without me. She used my on-camera bit I was doing here to her advantage. There's plenty to see and do for the rest of us, and taking in the beauty of a Rocky Mountain view like this is free of charge. It's stunning, and it's different, and nothing like I've ever seen, actually. Get ready for an Aspen adventure that's big on beauty and high country vibes. Rocky Mountain High, you guys ready to sing it? Well, just go to the chorus. Just go to the chorus. Rocky Mountain High, <laughs> Colorado. John is looking down most displeased right now with this crowd. When you travel, the world becomes a smaller place. When you explore with friends that share a love of photography, destinations come to life. This water is emerald green. We tell the stories of travel with our cameras, capturing some of the most beautiful locations on Earth. But every adventure reveals more than what's in the frame. Thunder Boomer, as we see him popping up right now. The people, the food, and unexpected turns in the journey. Now they're gonna swim right with him. <laughs> brings the full experience of travel into focus. Outside Beyond the Lens, brought to you by Visit Fresno County, nature, diversity, found in the heart of California's Central Valley. Stay in Fresno or Clovis and drive to three nearby national parks. By Hedrick Chevrolet, supporting the spirit of travel in each of us. Every journey has a first step. Start your next adventure here. By Fresno Yosemite International Airport, Rediscover your love for travel with more options, more flights, more connecting you to the people and the places you love. And by Visit Yosemite Madera County, California's gateway to Yosemite National Park. Explore the outdoor magic of Madera County and be inspired to discover more. And by viewers like you. bags and camera gear and jumping on planes to shoot travel shows since 2009. Almost non-stop. I love when I finally get to a new destination to film, but have grown pretty weary of the travel process itself. But it's part of the deal. When I'm hanging out with friends or meet new people, common questions I'm asked are, what's your favorite place you've been or where do you go when you're on vacation? The first question is easy. It's Switzerland. This drone shot I pulled in 2019 pretty much captures why. But the second question is a little more wide open. When the Aiello's plan a vacation, Hawaii has always been high on the list. We seem to go there a lot. And recently, the Big Island has been our go-to getaway. And as you might imagine, I usually bring a camera along to capture the fun and almost always put a little video together to memorialize the adventure. But besides last season's Alaska fishing adventure, I've never actually shot a show while on vacation with Jill and the kids. For starters, it sort of cancels out the meaning of the word vacation. And shooting a three minute vacation video with your family is a whole lot different than shooting an episode of this show with them. But this time, we're gonna give it a try. The pandemic caused the cancellation of several international shoots Zach, David, and I had planned 
And since we already had a family trip booked to Aspen, Colorado with our close friends, the Big Leones, who we travel with a lot, I decided to document this adventure and share it with all of you. So, here we go. All right, so it's, uh, it's about 5 a.m., 10 after 5 on a Thursday morning, getting ready to uh, get everybody up and get uh, cleaned up and headed to the airport. We're all packed up. Like any family vacation, getting everybody up in the morning and out the door on time is always a deal, especially when you have two teenagers um, who like to sleep until like three o'clock in the afternoon on a normal basis. So uh, we got some coffee going. Jill Aiello is uh, right there. She's not gonna show us our, honey, let's see, Let's. See. I know you got those things on your eyes, but she's not gonna, look at, she kind of showed me. It's authentic. People like authenticity, don't they? Viewers of TV shows like authenticity. I'm... <laughs> She's got these things in her eyes. She's not going to let me show them. Um, they make the puffy go away. Anyway, so we're going to get ready, get everybody up and running, and then uh, head to the airport, meet our friends there, and uh, got a short flight to uh, Denver, and then an even shorter flight into Aspen. Um, but we do have weather today, so it's supposed to be snowing in Aspen when we land, which is also one of the more extreme airports in America to land in the Aspen airport. So that ought to be interesting today. All right, let's get this party started. Lauren, are you awake? Yeah. Bye. Let's go. Got the same thing your mom has with those eye things. All right, Jet. Oh, you're awake. My alarm went off and I just had a flashback, so. <laughs> you ready to go? You ready to fly to Denver? Yeah. All right, let's do it, bud. You got your, did you get any breakfast yet? Coffee's all I need. Coffee's all, he's, all he needs, 14 years old, and just wants a cup of coffee. When I'm shooting a show with the guys, the getting out the door process is obviously a little more streamlined. This trip to Aspen is only a four day long weekend run, so everyone is packed pretty light. Lauren and Jet are in their mid teens now and have been lucky to travel a lot more than I did at that age. So they've got this process down pat. Make sure the cat doesn't get locked in something somewhere. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. You guys ready? You guys ready to fly through a big snowstorm into one of the most dangerous airports in America? <laughs> Don't put it like that. Uh, what did you find here? That's just. I'm gonna open this up on the plane and stink everybody out, and I'm gonna be talked about for many years to come. Yeah, that shouldn't even be <laughs> that. that... That shouldn't even be allowed in Remember an airport. Remember the lady that opened the sardine salad kit on the plane? What was she thinking? <laughs> Bad call on that. The Big Leones have caught up with us at the airport now and are choking down a quick breakfast before jumping on the two-hour flight from Fresno, California to Denver. You gonna eat those tots? <laughs> are you ready to go flying? Is this your first plane ride? Yes, it is. Is this your first plane ride? She has her festive Colorado oh, she's got, socks. She's got Colorado socks on. This is big, first plane ride. Okay, ILOs, let's go. Group number three. Let's roll. Looking down at the Sierras headed east, a light year of snowfall in California is already retreating from the higher elevations by mid-April. The flight over to Denver is always one of my favorites for checking out the canyon lands of Utah below. I never get tired of this view. Yeah, we've initiated our descent. Pretty sure you see back straight tables up right lock position. The bad weather we're expecting is already over Denver as we begin to land, signaling the moment where the wheels start to fall off the bus. 
The Big Leones are on an earlier flight than us and headed right to their gate as we grab some lunch during our two hour layover. After getting a text from the gang that they made it safe into Aspen, we headed to our gate to make the 30 minute flight ourselves. But Mother Nature had different plans for us this day as the storm up in the Rockies worsened and snow began to fall here at the Denver airport. 30 minutes before our flight was set to take off, it was canceled. We would not be flying to Aspen this day. This is what you do in travel, which is called pivoting. You can kind of cross your arms and pout and sit in the, uh, the gate for another four hours until they tell you that that flight's canceled. In this situation, we're gonna pivot. So we're gonna go rent a car. Our plane, our, we found out that our luggage will be shipped up tomorrow to Aspen. We're gonna go rent a car, hopefully four wheel drive, right? I have and then we're gonna drive in a snowstorm up to Aspen uh, <laughs> in the Rocky Mountains. This ought to be fun. I have to say, the kids did better than expected here. Secretly inside, I was really bummed out and somewhat dreading the drive on I-70 into the heart of the Rockies during a legit blizzard. But outwardly, I tried to keep it positive and moving right along. The drive to Aspen from Denver in good weather takes about four hours. In a heavy snowstorm, it would take longer. We're gonna rent a car. <laughs> All right, so that was fast. We uh, processed through the uh, airport really quick got to a rental car company here that we prefer and uh, got ourselves an all-wheel drive vehicle. And we're leaving at rush hour on a snowy uh, day, which ought to be fun. So let's see if we can get ahead of the, the program here. Without really even thinking about what we were doing, we were doing it. Snow began to come down hard as we entered rush hour traffic in Denver. Then we climbed blindly into the Rockies on Interstate 70 as conditions worsened still singularly focused on one thing, getting to that warm condo in Aspen, filled with friends so we could put this white knuckle drive behind us. Honey, they're not scared. I'm scared. <laughs> Seven hours later, around 11 o'clock at night, we made it. The inviting vibe of Aspen welcomed us after one of the longest days in recent memory. Now, this vacation could begin. All right, so last night was a rough night. Yesterday was a rough day. Um, driving from Denver up to Aspen and a blizzard. Finally got to the condo last night late. Um, this morning we're up early. I got Conley and Mark Biglioni, uncle and nephew. I'm about ready to hit the uh, stream. What stream are we fishing at today? Roaring Fork. We're gonna go to the Roaring Fork do a little nymph fly fishing. Um, that's fly fishing with a nymph as the, as the offering, right? Correct, you got it. All right, so, and Conley, you looking forward to this? I'm so excited. All right, so we're, we're really excited. It's really early, coffee's done. It um, snowed all night long, and not super heavy, but enough to put five or six inches on the ground. You can see the trees are gorgeous here, and it seems like every tree in Aspen has Christmas lights in it, I'm starting to figure out. So anyway, that's cool. Hot tub down there is probably gonna see some action later on tonight. Right now we're gonna go on the river early and see if these boys can catch a couple trout for us on the camera. One thing about my buddy Mark, he's all chips in when it comes to fishing. He and nephew Conley Biglione are serious about fly fishing enough to head out in 25 to 30 degree weather with fresh snow on the ground to be the first ones on the Roaring Fork. For the people out there that don't understand why people like Mark, Conley, and me would get up at Odark 30 to walk two miles in the snow to go fishing, this is why we do it. To experience settings like this. Mark and Conley are well ahead of me because I've been stopping to shoot the beautiful landscapes this morning here along the Roaring Fork. Uh, it's the river that basically runs through Aspen, Colorado. And uh, you know, we had that snow last night and it's left this place like a true winter wonderland even though we're in mid-April right now. But 
stopping to film here, grabbing some of these shots as we hike in. Uh, something I can't resist. So the guys are leaving good tracks for me to follow. Snow's not too deep. All my hiking clothes and boots and everything are in the Denver airport right now. So I'm doing this in tennis shoes and sweatpants, but you know what? You do what you have to do to get the shot, right? So, and it's nice. It's not too cold. It's about 30 degrees. And it looks like, I see Conley up ahead. Looks like we're getting to the spot. This is some of the stuff we've been dealing with hiking through here, going underneath these little bridges. And uh, looks like the guys are getting ready to dive off the trail here and get in the water. There you go, butt slide, nice. Now I have to do that in sweatpants. That ought to be fun. Like most things that require special skill, fly fishing is a practice. It's never really mastered. In these conditions, where flying insects are not stupid enough to be out here, the rainbow and brown trout packed in this section of river will take small nymph patterns floated near the bottom of the creek bed. The ability of these trout to spot an imitation insect in its larval state, the size of a grain of rice, bouncing with all the other subaquatic stuff in the water in low light, never ceases to amaze me. On his third cast, Mark was into his first fish of the morning, a nice little rainbow trout. Five minutes later, Mark landed his fourth fish, and I began to sense an anxiety in Conley who began moving closer to Mark's position on the river. Here's another example of how crazy fly fishing like this is. If you don't mend your line just right on the moving water, the current will grab the fly line floating on the surface and drag it in such a way that the trout will notice the small nymph pattern on the end of the leader not floating by naturally, and it will reject it. To get a hook up here, the presentation of the line and the fly has to be perfect. And after an uncle shares his experience on many rivers like this with his nephew, under falling snow and a gray sky, the lessons of a life chasing trout are handed down, and the practice goes on. Conley finally got it done. Nice job. Let's see what you got there. It, well, it's a dink. <laughs> it's a dink. Hey, man, at least you're not skunked. All right? That's right. Both Mark and Conley ended up doing great on the water, and the snowy conditions only made the stories that will be told of this morning later in life that much better. The city of Aspen is about 8,000 feet in elevation and is surrounded by several of the top ski resorts in the world. Silver mining in the late 1800s gave this place its start, but that boom waned by 1930. A turnaround here started in the 50s when the first ski resort was opened, and today, Aspen and the surrounding White River National Forest make a popular year-round playground for locals and tourists alike. High-end restaurants and bougie shopping are another big draw to Aspen, which is why the celebrities and super rich like to be here. But the town is also very approachable to people that live in the real world, too. We found lots of great places to eat that were fun and affordable. With the sky starting to clear up, most of our group decided to hit the mountain for some skiing. Jill, Lauren, Mark's wife Heidi, and myself split off and took the Aspen Mountain gondola to the top for some sightseeing instead. Okay, you guys ready for the big ride? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lo, are you ready? Yes. 
The enclosed gondola ride to the top was about $30 a person, and the views from this quiet and comfy coach to the top are breathtaking. Up on the summit, at just over 11,000 feet, we warmed up in the lodge and took in more top-notch views. In mid-April, we're here at the time of the year called the mud season, when the snow is almost gone, but the ground is still too wet to hike and see some of the big nearby attractions like Maroon Bells, the iconic mountains that draw big crowds every summer and fall, and something I really wanted to see. So instead, I did a little work on Google Earth, and after talking to Mark, who lives in Denver and comes to Aspen often, we make a plan to take a short drive up Castle Creek Road up to the old ghost town of Ashcroft. Now we're definitely uh, back here on this uh, Castle Creek Road drive, which is just outside of Aspen. We're seeing a lot of really nice private residences back here, which are massive log homes. And, Lots of stuff going on back here, but the, the valley is opening up now. Oh man, look at that. Dude, are you seeing that hole of water? You didn't see that, Conley, did you? I seen it. Oh man. There is a beautiful trout stream running through the middle of this camp, this valley. We gotta find a place to pull over. I gotta turn the camera around. You guys gotta see this. This valley was originally settled in 1880 after another rich strike of silver was discovered. By 1885, 2,000 people lived in the town of Ashcroft here. Today, only a few buildings still remain as monuments to this area's past. I'll tell you the light right now. The light is awesome. These aspens are pretty in their own way, even without any foliage on them. Everybody loves them when they have the gold in the fall. They're green in the summer, but right now, to me, they have a really beautiful quality to them, almost like a sheen that sort of uh, contrasts against the dark background. Of course, when you're shooting in the mountains, this kind of lighting is actually really, really good. A lot of people freak out when there's big puffy whites blowing around, but it changes the light. Just in the couple of minutes I've been sitting there talking to you, these aspens have started to kick off and pop a lot better now. They're almost backlit, but the sun isn't hitting the dark mountains behind it, so you get a really cool frame. It's stunning and it's different and nothing like I've ever seen, actually. Yeah, the Rockies are beautiful. There's, it's a very different vibe. You know, we're, we're California people. Mark, you've been living here in the, in the Rockies for in, the, in, in Colorado for a while. What do you like about the Rockies versus like the Sierras, like yeah, your home mountains? Yeah, I grew up in the Sierras. This is totally different here. There's a lot more trees in the Sierras and you don't have the aspens like we do here in Colorado. So it's just a little different, but it's beautiful both places. The Rocky Mountains of Colorado have a grandeur to them you don't see in most places. The mix of aspens, crystal clear waters, and majestic snow-covered peaks present gorgeous frames for the camera. A morning visit from our friend the Magpie reminds us that it's time for a short walk into town for breakfast at one of Aspen's best eggeries, Poppycocks. The Lox Benedict was perfect, but the oatmeal pancakes here are legendary. <laughs> now we did a lot of stuff on this trip that I didn't film. We did spend a fair amount of time walking around town, eating great food, and enjoying our time together in the condo. But after breakfast, we decided to take a nice walk down to the Roaring Fork before heading to the airport. All right, so we're on the trail here now. We're down by the Roaring Fork and right in the middle of Aspen here. And I think it's kind of cool because there's a there's a big shout out to John Denver. Obviously, John played a big part of Aspen. It was a big part of his life. Rocky Mountain High, you guys ready to sing it? One, two, three. I don't even know how that really starts. That's just, that's, I shouldn't admit that. Well, just go to the chorus. Just go to the chorus. Rocky Mountain High, <laughs> Colorado. John is looking down most displeased right now with this crowd. <laughs> Time spent like this with friends that you travel easily with is important to me. I spend a lot of time on the road away from my family shooting this show. So being able to experience a new place with them and our friends is extra special. Building memories in a place like Aspen, Colorado is easy to do. It's a town that has a definite magic about it. 
but making time to be with the ones you love wherever you decide to go is the first step in a journey where the destination isn't as important as the path you take to get there. Outside Beyond the Lens, brought to you by Visit Fresno County, nature, diversity, found in the heart of California's Central Valley. Stay in Fresno or Clovis and drive to three nearby national parks. By Hedrick Chevrolet, supporting the spirit of travel in each of us. Every journey has a first step. Start your next adventure here. By Fresno Yosemite International Airport, Rediscover your love for travel with more options, more flights, more connecting you to the people and the places you love. And by Visit Yosemite Madera County, California's gateway to Yosemite National Park. Explore the outdoor magic of Madera County and be inspired to discover more. And by viewers like you.